I have just had the uh, most unsuccessful car sale or purchase ever. I've embarked on a 331 mile road trip from Norwich to Birmingham again. After hitting the ground running with the Lupo, I thought we were probably going to have an easier journey than, well, for how it's going. I'm struggling to find the car, things are really, really looking difficult and, well, I'm not actually entirely sure where the next bit of profit is going to come from. But I never expected us to be actually eating into our profits with nothing to show for it. I knew this was going to be a long journey and I knew it was going to be a bumpy ride but I didn't expect to be heading back to Birmingham to look at another car. Yeah, that's right, we are on another roughly 300 mile road trip to Birmingham to have a look at the next dinger. I won't go into too much information of what car it is, but just for the record, I am absolutely hanging. I've come from a night shift and I'm really, really not fancy in this drive right now. I won't give too much away, but this car is another Volkswagen. It's a little city car, and I think geographically, moving it from Birmingham to Norfolk, we're gonna make this car a worthwhile vehicle to try and buy and sell. Where I am, there isn't a great deal of nice examples for sale. So geographically, I think just moving this car from up north-ish to sort of eastern part of the UK, hopefully gonna make a profit because the market is pretty slim on them. We've got 86 miles left, about an hour and 33 minutes to go. And I'm being fueled by coffee and a Lucas aid. So pray for me and I'll catch up with you in a little while. We've made it to the postcode, but I don't know about you, but I can't see a car in sight. Now, I've just messaged the seller just to see whereabouts it is. Hopefully, I'm not about to get robbed, but hopefully, I'll check in in a little while and we'll have a car on the trailer. Well, here it is then. The VW Fox, sitting, looking pretty in the car wash bay, but hiding lots of suspect mysteries that, well, you're about to find out. Well, I have just had the uh, most unsuccessful car sale or purchase ever. Now, the whole thing was a little bit dodgy. I really had bad vibes. It didn't seem legit at all. But we're in Birmingham. Now, some of you may know a guy called Lord Aline. He owns a car hire business called Platinum Executive Travel. And we're about five minutes away. So I think, because it'd be a shame to waste this video, I'm gonna go and have a little trip to Platinum Executive Travel, see if I can bring the camera in, show you guys round. And then once we've had a little bit of eye candy, I'll talk through the little story of what happened on the way home. But let's go and see some supercars. So there's some pretty awesome cars in here. Unfortunately, we can't show the ones upstairs because that is a private collection. But I think it's a 458, a GT3 RS, an SLS AMG, and I'm not 100% sure what else there is. But massive shout out to the guy for letting me come around and have a little look in here. Harold Khan's definitely my favorite, but check out some of these cars. Thank you. 
moments later. So, Lamborghini Urus, 200 grand, Rolls Royce Cullinan, probably 250, 300 grand. Well, I've just reversed a car and trailer with two Lamborghini Uruses. I think it was two Rolls Royce Cullinans and reversed the car in between all them vehicles with a trailer on the back. It's safe to say I was absolutely bricking my pants. It's not easy reversing with a trailer, but reversing with over probably a million pounds worth of cars near you is not an easy task. So, anyhow, we're on the way home. The car really wasn't worthwhile. Now, unfortunately, it's one of them things that you either have to go with your head or you take a risk. Now, I am a risk taker, but everything just stacked up against this car and I didn't think it was really worth doing. Now, to start with, so I approach, nobody's there. Turns out the guy is just around the corner. So, speak to him on Facebook, he turns up. Bear in mind, this is the guy I've been communicating to via Facebook. He isn't the guy actually selling the car. Anyhow, look around the car. The car ain't too bad. There is a dent on the door. There is a dent on the quarter, but probably get awayable. Then he then let slip that he wasn't actually the guy selling the car. That was his boss or his mate or whatever it was anyway. They didn't have the service book because his mate had lost it. They have so many cars, so his mate had lost it, didn't have a service book. It's like, right, okay. Obviously, I don't want to take the car without a service book because, well, he might shaft me and not actually have it and never post it to me and they've actually just bought a car with no service history. Then get fed all this shit about because I can see the oil's clear. I know the car's been serviced and looked after. Well, bugger me. The car is what, 20 years old, something like that. It's done 95,000 miles. If I try and sell it on to someone else and I tell them that the oil's nice color, that isn't proof that the car has been well looked after in its lifetime. Then the icing on the cake was it didn't have a log book. The owner or, you know, head honcho, whatever he was, turned up. I got the usual car sales speech, so I think they're pretty well rehearsed at selling cars because everything rolled off the tongue perfectly. Anyhow, I didn't have the logbook and he wanted me to go to the post office and apply for the logbook. I thought that was a bit unfair. I said, I'm not buying a car without a logbook. I don't think that's right, that isn't on. I'm not happy with that because to me, well, what if I apply for the logbook and it doesn't actually go through and technically the car isn't mine and I'm driving home with a car on the trailer and they ring up and say it's stolen and I then get nicked on the way home because I've got a stolen car on the trailer. And then, well, this was definitely the nail in the coffin. I looked back over the service history and I thought, well, there's only got service history up to 19,000 miles. And then it really clocked. The VIN number was different in the service book to what it was on the car. Now, I HPI the car before I went to view it and it was absolutely green ticks across the board. But I just had a little bit of doubt in my mind that something wasn't right. Okay, it probably might not have been the right service book, but all the regs, everything else that was in there matched up. The paint code was the same for the color of the car. 
but the VIN number was different. And I, don't, I just had a sinking feeling that it wasn't right. I needed to pull the plug. It wasn't worth taking the risk. So here we are. We're now, it's now 12 o'clock at the day. I've wasted a good few hours of my day. I've still got three hours and 10 minutes till I get home. Probably get home about 10 past three-ish. We're money down. So that isn't really beneficial. I spent 30 pound on temporary insurance. I need to put some fuel in the car, so that'll probably be 50 pound. I did do a HBI check, so that was about 11 pounds, something or other. So, all in all, it's been a bad day, and we are taking money out of a hard-earned profit from the Lupo, which really isn't gonna get us to that transporter, is it? So, finances are the most important thing, so let's just recap on our finance, check the kitty, and see where we are currently standing. Most importantly, how has this affected the finances? Well, we had 1,250 in the kitty, sold a spare battery for £15, insurance cost £28.10, tow vehicle fuel £60, vehicle HBI £11.99, leaving £1,164.91 in the kitty. Putting that to bed then and allowing that to be water under the bridge, I decided to crack on and knuckle down even harder on my Facebook search, searching high and low, day and night, trying to find the next thing that's going to make us money. But, well, it wasn't looking hopeful until, well, I found this. Air suspension. The topic of every modified car person's dream at the minute. Everybody is putting their car on air suspension because it is the in thing. Right, let's unbox some of this. Now, some of it isn't too bad. 